Whenever we've got constant acceleration, which we have here, constant acceleration in a straight line, then we can use our CVAC equations. So let's have a look and start filling in the information that we know in this situation. We've got uh, a train track and we've got a point A and a point B and a point C and we know that A to B is 50 metres and we know that B to C is 50 metres and therefore A to C is 100 metres and we know that at A the speed is 22.5 metres per second and that it takes two seconds to get from A to B and we're trying to find the acceleration of the train so let's make a SUVA and start filling things in now the thing about this one is that we could be doing a SUVAP from A to B or A to C or B to C. So let's make it clear what we're doing. I'm going to do A to B because I've got the most information about that. Okay, A to B SUVAP. We want to know the acceleration, so I'll put that in straight away. I know that it is two seconds from A to B. Um, I know that the displacement is 20, is, sorry, 50. That's the initial speed. The displacement is 50 meters the initial velocity is 22.5 and that's all we need to do now what did I do wrong here hmm, you're probably thinking nothing what I did wrong was I didn't start by specifying my positive direction and this is really 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 important in a SUVA so well in lots of things actually so when we start we make a note of what we're considering to be positive. In this case, fairly obvious, but gets more complicated. Then we can fill in our CVAP. Okay, uh, positive direction chosen, CVAP filled in. The letter, which is not included in this problem, is V. So the equation we need is the equation which doesn't have a V in, which is S equals UT plus a half AT squared. And we fill everything in. 50 is 22.5 times 2 plus a half a 2 squared. And we go solve, 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 and we get 2.5 meters per second squared. That's the first bit done. Okay, speed of the train when it passes C. So we've got our point A, our point B, and our point C. We know that A to B is 50 metres and B to C is 50 metres. We know the speed at the point A. We know the, what else do we know? The acceleration we know is 2.5 metres per second. And we also know that this is two seconds from here to here. So my SUVA that I'm going to set up, taking right to be positive, the SUVA has got to include C, because otherwise how am I going to find out about C? So I could do B to C, or A to C, and I'm going to choose A to C because I've got more information about A than I have about B. I know the speed at A. So I'm doing A to C SUVA. So what's my displacement now? It is 100 metres. My initial speed is 22.5 metres per second. V is what I'm trying to find out. The acceleration I already know, time I don't care about. So I'm choosing the equation without a T in, which is... V squared equals V squared equals U squared plus two A S. Shove everything in. V squared is twenty two point five squared plus two two point five uh, hundred. Solve, 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 and we get V squared is one thousand and six point two five, which means V is the square root of that, which is. Uh, 31.7 metres per second. Now, why did I only take the positive route there? There's two, isn't there? There's, there's the positive and the negative route, and I seem to have just taken the positive one. And maybe we'll talk about that in class. OK, finally, the time elapsed between the train passing B and C. So, obviously, my SUVAT now is going to have to be on BC, and I'm going to take right to be positive. And my ingredients are, well, I know the displacement from B to C is 50 metres. I know the initial velocity at B. Do I? No, I don't. OK, I don't know. I don't know the velocity at B, actually. The velocity at C, I do know, 31.7. The acceleration, I know, 2.5. The time is what I want. Oh, it's fine that I don't know the speed at B. Don't even need to. So I need the equation without a U, 
which is s equals vt minus a half at squared. Put everything in, 50 equals 31.7t minus a half times 2.5 times t squared. This looks a bit more nasty to solve, doesn't it? Let's uh, tidy it up a little bit. Putting everything on the left-hand side, we get 1.25t squared minus 31.7t plus 50 equals zero. Now, I admit it's not a very nice quadratic, but it's just a quadratic, so we can use the formula. t equals uh, minus b, so that's 31.7, plus or minus the square root of b squared, 31.7 squared, minus 4ac, 4 times 1.25 times 50, all divided by 2a, which is 2.5. And that's going to give us 1.7, Oh dear, it's not a pen. 1.7 seconds and, because obviously we've got the plus and the minus in there, 23.7 seconds. So which one of those is the answer to this question and what on earth is the other one about? Let's talk about that in class. But have a think about it. See if you can actually come up with an answer to the question. Just a quick comment about um, stones being thrown up and then falling down. This is all one suv. At any point on this, uh, in this situation is all can all be modelled within one suv. And what students have a tendency to do is think that this is one suv here and then this is a separate suv. And this, wherever you are on this, you can use a suv to find the missing variables. Your displacement, if you take up to be positive, will be positive, 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 positive. Then it will be positive but smaller. Your displacement here is zero. Now your displacement is negative. If you take up to be positive, then your speed is positive here, but your speed here will be negative because your speed is going in the opposite direction to the direction you chose to be positive. So just be really careful with positives and negatives when you're doing any suvat, but particularly stone projection. Let's set up our suvat then. Suvat. I'm going to take up to be positive because I want to, which means that acceleration is minus 9.8. I know that the initial speed is u. It takes 3.5 seconds to reach its maximum height. Oh, and I want to find u, first of all. So I'm going to choose the equation without uh, s in it, which is v equals u plus at. Stick everything in. Plus, minus 9.8, lots of 3.5. And that gives me u equals 34.3 metres per second. Right, what about the maximum height that it reaches? Suvat. Again, I'm going to take up to be positive. Why not? So at the maximum height, the velocity is zero. I now know the initial speed is 34.3. I'm trying to find the displacement, and the acceleration is minus 9.8. So I could choose the equation without t in, which is v squared equals u squared plus 2as. And then sticking everything in, 0 equals 34.3 squared plus 2 times minus 0.8 times s, which I'm trying to find. Solving gives... 1,156.89, but I'm going to use two significant figures. Actually, I should have used two significant figures here as well, because g is only being used to two significant figures. So that's two significant figures, and the answer here would be 1,200 uh, metres, and that's two significant figures. OK, we want to find the speed the ball is travelling at when it reaches A on the way down. Let me just get myself some room by moving her out the way. So what do we know now? So that we want to find the final velocity. And we know I'm going to take up to be positive. So the, the acceleration is minus 9.8. I want to find V. I know the initial velocity, it is 34.3 upwards, not interested in time. The displacement at the point when it reaches A on the way down, so it starts off here, and then we're talking about this point here. At this point here, the displacement is zero. There is no displacement at all, it is where it started. So the displacement zero. I'm going to choose the equation without t in, which is v squared is u squared plus 2as. And we're going to stick everything in. So v squared equals 34.3 squared plus 2 minus 9.8 times 0, which gives us v is 34.3 metres per second. 
Well, 34 metres per second plus or minus, which one do we want? Have a think about it. Do I want the minus 34.3 metres per second or do I want the plus 34.3 metres per second? Have a think and we'll talk about it in class. Okay, so the ball is thrown up in the air and it takes three seconds to reach its highest point and we want to know for how long is it above 39.2 metres. So what we're going to do is we're going to find out at what times it is at 39.2 metres. So the displacement is 39.2 metres. The initial velocity we don't know, but we know that it takes three seconds to reach its highest point. At its highest point, its velocity is zero. I'm going to take up to be positive. So A is minus 9.8. That's the force of gravity. And what am I trying to find out? Oh yes, the initial velocity, that's what I want, because then I can put that initial velocity into here, and then when I know that, I can find out, I'm going to take up to be positive again here, I can find out the times at which the ball is at 39.2 metres. So, doing the first one first to get u, we need the equation without an s, which is v equals u plus at. v is naught because it's the top, u is what I'm trying to find out, plus minus 9.8, lots of 3, which gives me u is 29.4 metres per second. So now I can put that into here, 29.4 metres per second. I want the equation without v in, which is s equals ut plus a half at squared. So 39.2 is 29.4t plus a half minus 9.8 times t squared and solving that quadratic gives me two solutions which are two seconds and four seconds. So the ball is thrown up in the air at two seconds it's at 39.2 meters it goes up it comes back down at four seconds it's also at 39.2 meters and then it keeps going down. So that what does that tell me about the answer to the question? t is two here T is 4 here. For how long is the ball more than 2 metres above its point of projection? So that's from time 2 to time 4. So that's a total of 4 minus 2 equals 2 seconds above the point of projection. OK, we've got one in vectors, but that's fine. So suvat. The good thing about vectors is that the direction is already taken into account by the i's and the j's, so we don't have to worry about which way is positive. Hooray! OK, so particle is moving at time uh, t is naught with velocity for i minus j, and then it accelerates uniformly with an acceleration of i plus 2j for 8 seconds. What is its displacement? So we want the formula without a v in, which is s equals ut plus a half at squared. s equals 4i minus j times 8 plus a half i plus 2j, just whack it all in, times 8 squared, which, if we tidy it up, gives us 64i plus 56j, I think I might have done that wrong. Let me know if I did that wrong. That's the displacement. So it starts off moving at a velocity of 4i minus j, so it's sort of going that way, and it uniformly accelerates, and the acceleration is i plus 2j for 8 seconds, and then it ends up, so that's sort of pushing it this way, that's the acceleration, and then it ends up at 64i plus 56j, which is quite a long way that way and quite a long way that way. It's up here somewhere, that's where it ends up. That's its displacement. So if we wanted to know it, the distance it's travelled, then we would need the length of this vector. And the length of that vector, using Pythagoras, is 64 squared plus 56 squared, square rooted. So that would be the actual distance travelled, whereas this is the displacement of the particle. If we wanted to know its initial speed, we'd take the velocity, and the speed is the length, the magnitude of the velocity vector. So that would be 4 squared plus 1 squared, square rooted. Meters per second, that would be the speed.